able to levitate, but you don't have that special potion like they do in Willy Wonka? <laughs> it's a good thing to hit this channel then, because today we're looking at how to levitate all within After Effects starting right... Wait, not starting right now. I just want to say that I haven't posted in three weeks because I was busy directing a short film, QBTS. And naturally, from that short film, I was able to learn a lot, which I'll share with you. But also when it comes to edits and visual effects, there's things I'm attempting in this film that I've never attempted before. So as I learn, you're going to learn. And I'm going to be sharing the tutorials with you as I progress through it. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything on that. I think it's going to be awesome. In fact, I know it's going to be awesome. What else am I to say? Oh yeah, cue intro. So right here I have all the footage that we need in After Effects and you can see there's a lot of people on TikTok guessing uh, how and about doing it and there was a few guesses that were saying I had a green screen chair. I thought that was a really good guess um, and you were right so. <laughs> now the main shot we have is the Roomba totally still and we have me leaning on a green screen chair, tossing the tennis ball, and the tennis ball comes to a rest right here. Can I just say real fast too, that this was a one take wonder right here. Look at this tennis ball real fast. Just watch this. I toss it. You would think this was fake. It bounces in. It lands. Look where it lands. Right there. I mean that, <laughs> I will never get that lucky again. So looking at the shot, we can see what we need to do. First of all, obviously, we need to remove the green stool that I am laying on. Second, we need to add the Roomba moving underneath me, and then I pick it up. And then thirdly, you can see when I toss the tennis ball, it goes behind uh, me, obviously, but it also goes behind the green stool that I'm leaning on right there. You can see that frame. It's going behind the green stool. So when we remove the green stool, the tennis ball needs to be uh, added back in as if we're you know, seeing through the green stool. So those are the three things we have to do, and then we're good. So besides this shot right here, we have the background which is just uh, everything removed, and then I got a freeze frame of that. We also have the shot of the Roomba coming in, uh, and then I stick a monopod in there and turn it off. And right where I turn it off, I just leave it there, set up the little green stool, lay down, and that's where I keep the Roomba for when I grab it. I also wanted to get a shot of my leg reflections in the floor without the green stool there. And you can see right here as I'm trying it, uh, you actually don't see my leg and the floor, the reflection, it's not there. Another shot I got just in case was me hiding in the corner right here and tossing the tennis ball in case we needed that to better add it going underneath me, but we ended up not needing that either. So before we go into edit, just to reiterate, all we have is our main shot, we have the background, and we have the Roomba moving and then coming to a stop when I turn it off. That's the only shots we'll be using, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to use the Roto Brush tool to rotoscope out my whole upper body, arms, and mainly just the white shirt that you're seeing, the arms and the tennis ball and everything. So let's take the main footage and make sure that the resolution is on full, double click on it to open it up in its own layer, and then let us take the Roto Brush tool, and if we can draw, oh, it's spazzed out there. Let us draw around my arms and shirt right here. So that looks good right there. Now we'll just have to play through the whole clip and make adjustments to our mask with our Roto Brush tool. And something to keep in mind is we don't have to worry about the mass that it's creating when it comes to these areas right here of my body. The only thing that we need to worry about is when the green stool is crossing with my body. So obviously my shirt all right here. And as my arms and hands move, you're gonna need to worry about where it's going into this green area. So when you're done rotoscoping the whole clip, you can see that we are left with this bizarre mask of me. Now you can see at the end of, near the end of the shot, uh, I cut the clip uh, to make it two layers of the rotoscope. And that was because it seemed like the rotoscope just was, it was taking too much uh, RAM, too much CPU, GPU, who knows, it just would not move any forward. So I just had to cut it there, make a new clip, add rotoscope to that clip as well, just to help out the computer. I don't know if you have a problem like that, like it literally would not go another frame of reading with the Roto Brush tool. So if you ever had that problem, just create another layer and just finish it out. Another thing about the Roto Brush tool is that it loves to read in full resolution, which I don't feel like dealing with because it's just going to slow down my software. So what we can do is we can turn off all the layers except for the layer of our main footage that we put the Roto Brush on. We can go up to File, Export, and go to Add to Render Queue. And then in the Render Queue, go to the Output Module and click on the Lossless and then change the AVI to QuickTime. Make sure that your format options is animation and then change the channels to RGB plus alpha. 
and then hit OK, and then select a place that you want to export it to and go ahead and hit render. And once that's done rendering, we can take that clip and bring it back into After Effects, and you can see now we have this nice mask of me, just like we had before, except for now the software is able to preview through it much smoother. And you can see here we still have the two layers of our main footage that has the Roto Brush tool effect applied to it. What we can do is we can delete that one layer underneath and then let's extend out it back to the very end. And let's just go to the effects control uh, menu right here and delete the Roto Brush tool from that. And that'll now just be the original footage that we had before without the mask of me. And if we take the background shot right here and we put it in between the main footage and then the Roto uh, version of me, you can see that it removes the stool just like we want. So let's take this background footage as well. It's Control D to duplicate and let's put another one down at the bottom just in case we need it for later. And let's take the background shot that's in between the main footage and the Roto version of me. And let's create a mask that goes around generally where that stool was sitting. So to make that easier, we can just turn off the background layer but still have it selected so then we can just create this nice mask around this right here. And you wanna make sure that you mask around the reflection of the stool in the ground as well. So right there looks good. If we turn it back on, let's feather it out to 150. And I'm actually going to adjust the mask to actually go down this carpet line right here too, just so we don't have this odd distinct color change between the ground from here to here where the shed is being casted. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the edges on the rotoscope of me. You can see a lot of the green is actually showing through where the rotoscope wasn't perfect. And that's where the green stool is good because we can just key that out. So if we right mouse click on the layer, go to effect, go to color correction, and then go to selective color, we can change the colors from reds to greens and then apply the cyan 100% and then the magenta negative 100 and then the yellow 100% and this is going to intensify all the green pixels in the shot which will you know just intensify the green stool and then let's go to again effect on that layer go to keying and then go to key light 1.2 select the color drop pen thingy and let's find a nice green spot right there looks good and you can see how it removes the green fairly well there's a little bit of noise there so if we go to the screen matte options we can change soft color to hard color and then adjust our clip black and our clip white until we get a look that we like. We can also soften it up with the screen softness to something like two. And if we play through the shot right here where I dip my hand in, you can see that's with the key and then let's look at it without the key. You can see it does a lot better. Now, there's one thing that you'll notice when we add the key, the key is also removing the tennis ball when it goes into that area. So what we can do is we can create a mask around the tennis ball with our main footage layer that has no effects applied to it. So if we just duplicate that layer again, Let's name this tennis ball mask. Put it above the roto version of me. And we can go to the frame right before it actually goes in front of the green stool. So right here is good. And we can draw a mask around my hand and then go nicely around the tennis ball right here. Make sure we hit M on the layer. Go to the mask path and select the stopwatch so we can create a keyframe. We can also control shift D on the layer and then just delete this front part because we don't need all that. And now we can just go through frame by frame or every other frame and keyframing this mask to stay with the tennis ball. When you're done with that mask, you can bring the feather up. Now, if you want to go even further to perfect the details of the roto mask that we've created, even with the chroma key added, there's still these weird artifacts right here that are showing up these dark colors in between my fingers. What we can do is select the layer, double click on it, and then here we can select the eraser tool and make sure that the duration is on single frame. And what you can do is you can go frame by frame erasing what you don't want to be seen uh, in the shot. And so that's just a rough job of it right there, but you can see how you can actually perfect it even more. It's a lot faster to do it that way than actually creating a mask around it, in my opinion, especially with something like fingers, just going frame by frame and doing some quick little adjustments here and there. Over here, you can see you can adjust the opacity and the uh, diameter, the hardness of the actual eraser itself. So you have all those options as well to really perfect that mask. So now that the mask and everything is great around my body for removing this uh, stool below me, let's go ahead and add the Roomba in. So we can just select the layer of the Roomba that was moving through and let us now create a mask around the Roomba itself that just follows straight through till the end right there when it stops. And let me cut the frame right when it stops. So it stops right there is when it's done moving. So cut the end there. 
And to make this mask, I prefer to do it in Mocha. So if we right mouse click on our Roomba layer, go to Effect and then the Boris FX, and then we can go to Mocha AE and make sure our resolution is at full and select the Mocha logo right there to open up the software. You can just start on this still right here. And let's just draw a nice little mask around our Roomba. And when you have that mask done, we can track forward and backwards, which will be pretty simple because it's a simple shape and Mocha should do just fine. Once your mask is tracked, make sure you save and then exit out of Mocha. So back in After Effects, make sure our Roomba layer is selected. We can go up to the Mocha A effect right here. And let's click the matte drop down option. And now we can go to Create AE Mask, select that. Now the end of this clip where we cut it is exactly where it stops. So we need to put that in right when I'm grabbing the Roomba. So if we scrub ahead right there, that's when it needs to be cut. And now for this mask that we have around this Roomba moving underneath me, let's go ahead and adjust the feathering. And now let's take this mask layer, let's lock it down so we don't mess it up, and let's create another mask underneath the Roomba. Uh, we can just do one with the ellipse mask tool uh, just to see the reflection of our Roomba in the floor. And let's make that mask feather about 150. And now select the mask path stopwatch to create a keyframe. And now let's just go through to adjust that mask to move with our Roomba. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I wanna remove my mono pad that's stuck in to turn off the Roomba. You can see right there it's coming through and hitting the button. So if we go to the frame right before it shows up right there looks good. Let's duplicate our Roomba layer. And now let us take the mask uh, that we use for the reflection of the ground. We can go ahead and delete that and we can actually delete the other mask as well. And now let us right mouse click on that layer, go to time and then freeze frame. And now let's create a mask around just the top part of the Roomba. And now select P to bring up the position of that. Stopwatch that to create a keyframe and then control alt D and delete the beginning of that clip we don't need. And now let's go frame by frame, moving this image along the Roomba to stay in the proper spot. So if we go to the next frame, we'll just have to move ahead a little bit. And now you can see you never see a glimpse of the monopad. Okay, next let's go ahead and remove the Roomba that's just chilling there. So what we can do for that is we can go to the main footage that has no effects applied to it, duplicate that, and we'll rename this to Roomba Removal. We can put it right on top of the background. I believe that should work. And if we go to the frame when I pick up the Roomba and all of its shadow is gone, and we have this tennis ball to deal with actually, so let's wait for the tennis ball to kind of roll down. And that right there looks good right there. We can go to time, freeze frame, and we'll use this frame right here to remove our Roomba. So we can turn off that clip, making sure that the layer is still selected. And let's draw a mask around the Roomba. We don't need to worry about that tennis ball, uh, but we do need to worry about the actual uh, stool right over here. And we can bring the feather up to about 125. And now to remove this tennis ball from the shot, we can just duplicate this Roomba removal layer. So duplicate that, hit U to bring up the uh, time uh, freeze frame, and we can adjust the actual frame that is frozen. If we scrub back, we can see where the tennis ball was not there. And then we can hit M to bring up the mask, delete that mask, and now again, turn off the layer, and then now just draw a mask around the tennis ball. You can see this effect requires a lot of mass. Turn the layer back on, adjust it where needed. We can feather out pretty heavily, say 55, and then we can take that layer and draw another mask right around this black little thing that's showing up with the Roomba, and then make that mask a subtract. Make sure it's not showing our tennis ball, and then with that, we'll just have to feather it out a little bit, something like 25. Make sure the layers that are removing the Roomba end as soon as I grab the Roomba. So let's control all D to both of those and delete the end parts. We could select those two layers, uh, right mouse click, pre-compose, and just name them Roomba Removal. And now just a little adjustment to it. We can right mouse click, go to Effect, go to Color Correction, Lumetri Color. And now we can adjust the basic correction so we don't have such a dark mask being made on the floor compared to the rest of the floor. So just by adjusting the temperature, highlights, whites, and contrast, I'm able to go from this to that, which looks great. So the last thing that we'll have to do with the Roomba is we need to create one more mask for it. When I'm lifting it up, you can see it's actually going into the mask 
uh, that's removing the stool underneath me. So we'll just need to create a nice little circular mask around it just to follow the edges here uh, so we can bring that aspect back into it. So if we go again to our main footage that has no effects to it, duplicate that. Let's bring it up above uh, our last Roomba layer and let's create this nice little mask around here. I like to make my mask uh, on none when I go through and do this tracking just to better get an idea of what it's removing and what it's not. And when our mask is selected, our tracker window, which usually has all the tracking options for the footage, uh, now has options just for tracking the mask. Just like in Mocha, we can now track forward and backwards of the mask we've created. And when you do it in After Effects, it will just create a keyframe for every frame. Whereas Mocha, it doesn't do that, which is why I like Mocha better. But do this for educational sake. And if you also feel like every frame is just too many frames to work with, you can also just do it yourself and go like, let's say three frames ahead and adjust. And once you're done with that, make sure you change the mask back to add. And now let's select the feather options and let's bring it to 15. So we can take all the Roomba layers that we've created, select them all, right mouse click, pre-compose, and let's just name them Roomba. Now let's go ahead and fix my hands as they go to grab the room, but you can see that the rotoscope tool we did didn't really capture my hands out here, which is fine because we weren't really trying to do that. So we'll just have to work on those few frames. If we go to, again, our main footage that has no effects on it, Control D to duplicate. We can bring that up above the roto version of me. Let's go to the frame where the hand starts to clip, which is right here. Let's turn that frame back on, and now let's just create a mask around my hand and hit M to bring up mask path, select the stopwatch to create a keyframe, and now let's go frame by frame, adjusting the mask as my hand moves down to grab this Roomba. Make sure we cut that clip down to just where the mask is needed, and then let's make the feather of the mask something like 25. You'll see we also need to create a mask for the back hand as well. We can do that on the same exact layer. And that completes what we need to get done with the Roomba. The last thing we need to do is now to finish out the tennis ball. So once again, let's go to the main footage that has no effects to it. Let's duplicate that. Let's name it tennis ball. We can put it right below the roto version of me. And now let's go to a frame where we see it bouncing in the background. Okay, so right, let's see, right there. You can see the ball as it bounces right there. We get a nice, uh, somewhat clean image of the tennis ball. So we can right mouse click, time, freeze frame. And now let's create a nice mask around that tennis ball. And let's feather it out to something like 25. And select that layer again, control alt home so we can make our anchor point right in the center of our mask. Select P and select the stopwatch so we keyframe the position. And now let's go a frame back and you can now move the tennis ball where you see it previously and another frame again you can see it right there so we can move it there and then we don't see it anymore because now it's behind the stool I'm laying on but we can continue to move this image of the tennis ball to get the nice speed with it. Let's make sure we cut off the front part where it's not needed and when it bounces right there we don't need it so let's cut off and remove the rest of it and add the motion blur and just like that we don't have the tennis ball weirdly disappearing behind me now for the last part we need to create a mask for when the tennis ball rolls into the frame at the end so again let's go to our main footage that has no effects on it duplicate that and let's rename it to tennis ball end we can put it right above the Roomba layer and let's go to when it actually starts rolling in so let's go right before it rolls in and we'll cut the layer there and delete the front part. And as it rolls in, we wanna create a mask around the whole thing right here. So what we'll do with that is we'll just do it in Mocha and that'll be far easier than in After Effects. So if we right mouse click, go to Effect, Force, FX, Mocha AE, let's make sure our resolution is to full, select the logo to open up Mocha. And now we'll just create a circle mask around our tennis ball, track through, and then save and exit out of Mocha. And also like we did with the room, we wanna create another mask underneath the tennis ball that is for the reflection in the ground. Then what you can do is a little preference of mine is to select all the layers, pre-compose them, and then add a camera shake to the whole shot, which is just a nice look for when you're doing a TikTok video or a social media type video. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date with this channel. If you're not following me on TikTok, make sure you do that as well because a lot of these tutorials will be correlating with uh, TikTok videos. Not always, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning how to levitate in the air without using some kind of potion. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.